This is the Edexcel Foundation tier. Paper 3 calculator paper from November 2019. Question 1 says write down two factors of 12. The factors of 12 are the numbers that we can multiply together to make 12. So we can have 1 times 12 to make 12. We can have two sixes or we can have three fours. So the factors of 12 are 1, 2, 3, 4, 6 and 12. And we only need to give two of them for this question. So any two of these numbers will be correct. Question two says find one third of 30. A third is the same as dividing by three. We're splitting it into three bits. So 30 divided by three is 10. Three tens make 30. So a third of 30 is 10. On a calculator, whenever we have an of, we can just change it to a times. So we can type in one third times 30 into the calculator, and that will give us our answer of 10. Question three, write 0 0.7 as a fraction. This is the temps column. So we've got seven temps, seven temps as a fraction. And again, the calculator can help us here. So if we just type in 0 0.7, the calculator will automatically give us our answer as a fraction, seven temps. Question four, here is a list of numbers. And we need to write down from the list the multiple of six. So the multiples of six are the numbers in the six times table. And the six times table goes six, 12, 18, 24, and so on. So which of these numbers is a multiple of six? 18, 18 is in the six times table. So 18 is a multiple of six. Question five change four kilometers into meters. Whenever we have K or kilo, that means a thousand. So it's actually 4,000 meters, 4,000 meters. To change from kilometers to meters, we can also times by a thousand. So four times a thousand is 4,000. Question six, here is a grid of squares. Write down the ratio of the number of shaded squares to the number of unshaded squares. So how many shaded squares do we have? One, two, three. How many unshaded squares? That's five. So the ratio is three to five. So we've got shaded squares to unshaded squares, three to five. Question seven, W equals four U plus three. Find the value of W when U is eight. So we're changing U into eight. Four U means four times U. So four U means four times U. So we've got four times u, and that's an eight now. So four times eight plus three. And the calculator will work that out for us. Four times eight plus three is 35. Question eight. Here are the first five terms of a sequence. We've got 1, 3, 6, 10, 15. Write down the next two terms of the sequence. So we can see it's gone up by 2 from 1 to 3, then up 3, then 6 to 10 is up 4, and 10 to 15 is up 5, 
So we can see it's going up by one more each time. So up two, up three, up four, up five. It'll be up six next. So 15 plus six is 21. And then up seven. 21 plus seven is 28. So the next two terms are 21 and 28. Question nine. Mrs. Brown asked each child in her class which pet they liked best. Here are her results. And we need to complete the frequency table for this information. So we've got a box to do Italian. So with a tally, we just draw a line for each, each one. And then when we get to the fifth one, um, is a mark across the first four. I'll show you as we go. So dog, we put a mark, a line for dog. Then rabbit and cat and dog again and dog again and hamster cat dog that's four dogs now rabbit hamster cat cat four cats as well a dog so the fifth dog the line goes across the first four so that means it's a group of five and then we start with another one by itself again cat there we go that's the fifth one dog rabbit and dog again so the frequency so for dogs we've got a five and a three so that's eight we've got three rabbits five cats and two hamsters and in total we've got six along three down that's 18 in total and eight and two make 10 plus three and five is another eight so 18 so we should have it right on the grid below draw a bar chart for this information so we're going to have the frequency up the side and that's going to go zero one two three four five six seven and the highest was eight and along the bottom we're going to have the dog rabbit cat and hamster so we'll have the dog rabbit cat and hamster so i'm going to leave a space between the bars so i'm going to use this this box this box this box and this box so for what's first dog there are eight so the bar has to go up all the way to eight the bar has to go up to eight for rabbit it's up to three five cats and hamster two so there's our bar chart we should have a label on the bottom which is just pet so pet along the bottom write down the most popular pet so which was chosen the most times? Well, dog. Dog was chosen eight times. That's more than the others. So dog is the most popular pet. Question 10. On the diagram above, draw a diameter of the circle. So a diameter is a line that goes from the circumference to the circumference so from the edge to the edge and it goes through the center so we've got to draw a line that starts at one side goes to the other side through the center of the circle and the second one 
on the diagram below, draw a segment of the circle and shade the segment. So a segment, so we're going to draw a line from one side to the other. It doesn't have to go through the centre. In fact, the centre is not even um, drawn on for us. That's called a chord. But the segment is not a line, it's an area. So it's the area that's made by drawing a chord. Question 11. Dylan buys 13 bicycle lights for £7.50 each. He pays with five £20 notes. How much change should Dylan get? So he's got five £20 notes. So five £20 notes. Five twos are ten, so five twenties must be a hundred. So he's paid with we can use the calculator, 520s are 100. So he's paid with 100 pounds and he's bought 13 bicycle lights for seven pounds 50 each. So 13 times 7.5 or seven pounds 50 is 97 pounds 50. So 97.5, 97 pounds 50. How much change should he get? So it costs £97.50. He's given them £100. So the change will be 100 Take away £97.50. 100 Take away my last answer. Is 5 over 2 or 2.5. £2.50. So 2.5 or £2.50. £2.50. £2 the normal price of a bicycle is £120. In a sale, there is one-fifth off the normal price of the bicycle. Work out the price of the bicycle in the sale. So we could work out one-fifth of 120. One-fifth of 120. is 24. So there's one fifth off, which means there's 24 pounds off. 24 pounds off the normal price. So it's the normal price, take away 24. So 120, take away my last answer, is 96 pounds. Another way of doing that would have been to work out what four fifths is. So if one fifth is off, that means we've got four fifths left. So we could have done four fifths times 120, four fifths of 120, and that would be 96. Question 12. Cornflakes are sold in two sizes of box. So there's a small box and a large box, and they have different weights. And Ray has bought or buys three small boxes and some large boxes. And in total, we've got 5,850 grams of cornflakes. Work out the number of large boxes of cornflakes that Ray buys. So three small boxes. So three lots of 450 grams. So three 450s make 1,350. So that's the small. And we know the total. So to find what the large boxes all add up to, we do the total, take away the small. So five. 1,850, take away 1,350, 5850 minus 1,350 is 4,500. So the large boxes 
all add up to 4,500, and each of them is 750. So we can find out how many 750s make 4,500 by dividing. How many 750s go into 4,500? And that is 6. So there must be 6 large boxes of cornflakes. Question 13. The stem and leaf diagram below gives information about the ages of people in a social club. So we've got a stem and leaf. So these are the ages. So we've got tens and ones. So 31, 34, 35, 40, 42, 42, 45, 46, 50, 51, 57, and so on. And the question says find the range of these ages. So the oldest person is 74. The youngest person is 31. So the range is the difference between the biggest and the smallest. 74 take away 31 is 43. Question 14. Here is a rectangle. And Kobe has to find the perimeter of the rectangle. He writes perimeter is 7 times 3. What mistake has Kobe made? So to work out the area of a rectangle, we do length times width, which will be 7 times 3. So Kobe calculated the area The area is the space inside the shape. That's what Kobe's calculated. The perimeter is the distance around the edge of the shape. So 7 plus 3 plus 7 plus 3, or 2 7s plus 2 3s. So we should have 2 7s, 7 plus 7 plus 2 3s plus 3 plus 3 and it should be 20 centimetres. So it should be... So it should be 20 centimetres. He calculated the area, he times, he should have added up all the distances, not multiplied them. Here is a triangle. Iram solves a problem about this triangle to find the value of x. Her answer is x equals negative 2. Explain why this must be wrong. So we can't have a negative length. So this length can't be negative 2 centimetres. You can't have a negative length. So the answer or a length cannot be negative. So this length would be negative 2 centimetres. That's not possible, so the answer must be wrong. Question 15. There are 800 students at a school. Each student either has either a school dinner or a packed lunch. So we could draw a table for this, that would be helpful. So a two-way table. So we've got school dinner, or we've got packed lunch. And we'll have the total. And we've got boys and girls and a total. And we'll draw a quick table, and then we'll start doing the calculations. Okay, so there are 800 students at school. Let's fill that in first. The total of the totals, 800. 31% have packed lunches. So 
of 800. So either 31% times 800, or as a decimal, 0 0.31 times 800. So if we did it as a percent, we'd like 31%. Percent times 800, or as a decimal, 0 0.31 times 800. So 248. So 248 students have packed lunches. 55% of the students are boys. So we've got 55% of 800. So 0 0.55 times 800, 0 0.55 times 800 is 440. So that's boys, 440 boys. And we can actually work out the number of girls now. Or we could also work out the number that takes have school dinners. But before we do that, let's do this. So 60% of the boys of the boys have school dinners. So 0 0.6 times the number of boys, not the total, 60% of the boys. So 0 0.6 times 440. That's our last answer. 264. So 60% of the boys have school dinners. 264. Now we can just fill in the missing information. So the number of girls is 800 take away 440. That's 360. The number of school dinners is 800 take away 248. Which is 552. The number of girls having school dinners is 552 take away 264, which is 288. And then the girls have impact lunch, 360 take away 288, 72. And then either way to find the boys have impact lunch, I mean, we don't need it because the question was how many girls have packed lunches. That's 72. But it'd be good to um, make sure we get the same answer by both methods here. So 440 take away 264, 176. Or using this line, 248 take away 72. 176. Same answer. So we know this is looking good, should be correct. So how many girls have packed lunches? 72. Question 16. In a bag there are only red counters, blue counters, green counters and yellow counters. A counter is taken at random from the bag. The table shows the probabilities of getting a red and a yellow. And we know the number of blue counters, the ratio of blue counters to green counters is three to four. So we need to complete the table. So all the probabilities of everything that can happen have to add up to one. So we've got red and yellow at the moment. And that's 0 0.4 and 0 0.25. So 0 0.4 and 0 0.25 is 0 0.65. So at the moment, we've got 0 0.65. And because they all add up to 1, the blue and the green must be whatever 1 minus 0 0.65 is what's left to make it one whole and that is 0 0.35 so the blue and the green together make 
0 0.35. Both of them together. And the ratio is 3 to 4. So there are 3 parts and 4 parts. That makes 7 parts. So it's blue to green. And it's 3 parts to four parts so seven in total seven boxes here in total so 0 0.35 is shared between the seven boxes each box must be the same so each part is worth 0 0.05 so each one of these is 0 0.05 So blue is three lots of 0 0.05 and green is four lots of 0 0.05. So three of these is 0 0.15. So blue is 0 0.15 and four lots of 0 0.05. One more 0 0.05 is 0 0.2. So the probability of a blue is 0 0.15 and the probability of a green is 0 0.2. Question 17, part A, says complete the table of values for y equals 4x minus 6. So the y is equal to 4 times the x minus 6. So for the first one here, y is 4 times, when x is negative 1, 4 times negative 1 minus 6. So 4 times negative 1 minus 6 is negative 10. 4 times 0 minus 6, when x is 0, y is 4 times 0 minus 6. Which is negative 6. When it's when x is 2, we've got 4 2's minus 6. Which is 2. And we can see the pattern here. It's going up by 4 every time. So this one should be 6. When x is 3, y should be 6. And we can check that on the calculator. We get 6. Part B says on the grid, draw the graph of y equals 4x minus 6 for values of x from negative 1 to 4. So the same graph as part A, the same values, same x values as part A. So each set of values, each x and y, becomes a set of coordinates. So when x is negative 1, y is negative 10. So negative 1 for x, negative 10 for y. When x is 0, y is negative 6, 0, negative 6. When x is 1, y is negative 2. Then we have 2, 2, 3, 6, and 4, 10. 2, 2, 3, 6, 4, 10. And we've got a straight line graph. The graph's made a straight line. It's in the form y equals mx plus c. It's a straight line graph. So we just join up the points with a straight line, with a ruler. And there is our graph. Question 18. Reflect shape P in the line Y equals 3. So where is Y equal to 3? Y is equal to 3 here and anywhere along this line. Everywhere along this dotted line, Y is equal to to 3. So that's the mirror line. That's what we're reflecting the shape in. 
So from each point, we're going the same distance away from the mirror line. So one away, one away on the other side. From up here, let's point at 17. We're one, two, three, four. So on the other side, one, two, three, four. And this point at two, four is one away. So one on the other side. So we've done all three corners. We can just join them up. And that is our new shape. Question 19. Solve 4 times x minus 6 equals 44. So our first step, we can either divide both sides by 4, or we could expand the bracket. Either way would be okay. I'll do, I might do both. So let's expand the bracket first. So 4 times x when we're expanding a bracket, we're multiplying the term on the outside by both of the terms inside the bracket. 4 times x gives us 4x. 4 times negative 6, a positive times a negative is negative. 4 times 6 is 24. And that is equal to 44 still. So 4x minus 24 is 44. We want to get x by itself. So we want to get rid of the, the minus 24. We can get rid of that by doing the opposite of taking away 24, which is adding 24. So let's add 24 to both sides of the equation. So if we add 24 to the left side, then minus 24 disappears. If we add 24 to 44, we get 68. And remember, you can use a calculator if you want to. Now we've got 4 times x is equal to 68. We want x by itself. The opposite of multiplying is dividing. So let's divide both sides by 4 and we get an answer of 17. Now we could have also started our first step as dividing both sides by 4. So to get rid of, because everything on this side is times by 4, or the x minus 6 is all times by 4. So we can get rid of the times by 4 by dividing by 4. And if we divide both sides by 4, 44 over 4 is 11. Then we could have added 6 to both sides and got x is 17. Question 20. So everything, the whole set of numbers, the universal set is, well, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, and 13. Set A, set A is going to be multiples of 3. They're going to go in one circle. Set B is even numbers. They'll go in the other circle. And anything that's a multiple of three and even will go in the middle and any numbers left that aren't in A or B will go on the outside. So let's, the multiples of three are in the three times table. So for A, let's have the three times table, three, six, nine, and 12. And for B, the even numbers that's, that's the two times table. So that's two, four, six, eight, ten, and twelve. So now we can complete our Venn diagram. So what's in both? We have six and twelve in both. In just A, just the red ones, we've got three and 9. In B, just the green ones, we've got 2, 4, and we've got 8 and 10. And the numbers left, the numbers not in either, we've got 1, 
5, 7, 11, and 13. So we should have 13 numbers. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Question 21. Franco buys a house for £146,500. He sells the house for £158,220. Calculate the percentage profit that Franco makes. So the profit is the change, how much it's gone up by, over the original amount times 100. So how much has it gone up by? Let's work that out. So 158,000. 220 take away 146,500 is 11,720 pounds. So the change is 11,720 pounds. That's how much it's changed by. So we want that number over the original amount, which was 146,500, then times 100 to make it a percentage. So that number over the original times 100, and that's 8, 8%. So if we add on 8% to the first number, we should get the second one. 146,500 times 1.08 to add on 8% and we get the second number. Question 22. Part A says expand and simplify. So we've got double brackets here. We're going to multiply both of the terms in the first bracket by both of the terms in the second bracket. So x times both of the ones in the second bracket and five times both of the ones in the second bracket. So x times x makes x squared. x times negative nine is negative nine x. Five times x is five x and a positive five times a negative nine is negative 45. So we've expanded, we still need to simplify, and we can do that by collecting the like terms, which are the x terms. They're both x terms, so we can add them together. So we have x squared, we've got negative 9 plus 5, negative 9 up 5 is negative 4. So minus 4x minus 45. Part B says factorize fully. So when it says factorize fully, it's saying we have to take out of the bracket everything that we could possibly take out. It has to be completely factorized so it couldn't be factorized anymore. So with the nine and the six, they're both numbers in the three times table. So we can take three on the outside and we also have x squared and x so we can take out an x. They both have an x in them. So 3x comes out. 3x times what makes 9x squared? 3 times 3 makes 9. And x times x makes x squared. 3x times what would make 6x? That would be a 2. 3x times 2 is 6x. So there is our answer, 3x times 3x plus 2. Question 23. Use your calculator to work out, and it's 29 squared minus 4.6 over the square root of 35 minus 1.9 cubed. And we just type this in the calculator exactly how it looks. So we're going to use the fraction button. On the top, 29 squared minus 4.6. On the bottom, square root first, 
and 35 minus 1.9 cubed. So that's exactly how it looks on the calculator. Press equals, and we need to write down all the figures on the display. So 157, 157. 0.668255 Part B says write your answer to part A correct to four significant figures so one, two, three, four significant figures So the next one down, the fifth significant figure is a six. So it is five or above. So we round up. So we've got 157.7. Question 24. The scatter graph shows information about the marks a group of students got in science, in a science test, and in a maths test. So we've got a scatter graph drawn for us and it says Jamie got a mark of 34 in science use the scatter graph to find an estimate for Jamie's maths mark so to get an estimate from a from a scatter graph we need to draw a line of best fit so a line of best fit is going to go through the middle of these points trying to minimize the distance from the points to the line ideally we'll have about the same number roughly the same number of points on each side so if we draw a line down here we've got six points on each side of the line so something like this somewhere around here will be our line of best fit with these lines there isn't or there isn't a um a particular answer they're looking for there's a range of answers so any line that fits these points should give you a should give you a good enough answer so 34 in science so if you've got 34 in science go up to the line and then across and we'll see that comes out so I've got 38 from my line if you you might have a slightly different answer it might be slightly like a little bit higher a little bit lower somewhere around 38 will be acceptable question 25 the table gives information about the times taken in seconds by 18 students to run a race. Work out an estimate for the mean time. So the average, the mean, the mean average. Give your answer correct to three significant figures. So when we've got a free a table, frequency table, we don't know. Well, from these groups, we don't know the exact times they took. We know seven students ran between 15 and 20 seconds. But we don't know what those times were. They could have been 16, 17, 18, 19 seconds. So as a guess, as an estimate, we use the midpoint. So we're going to assume that this student took 7.5 seconds, halfway between 5 and 10. We're going to assume that these two both took 12.5 seconds. These seven students all took 17.5 seconds. And these eight students all took 22.5 seconds. So we've got one student, 7.5 seconds. So that's a total of 7.5. Two students, 12.5. So two 12.5s are 25. Seven times 17.5 is 122.5 and 8 times 22.5 is 180 
So we're adding them up. So we're going to add these up down here. So we've got, so for the total times, we've got 7.5 plus 25 plus 122.5 plus 180. And that's 335 seconds in total. So all of them added up, the 7.5, the 212.5s, the 717.5s, and the 822.5s, all add up to 335. So to find the mean, we add them all up and divide by how many? And there were 18 students in total. So 335 divided by 18 is 16, no, 18.61 recurring 18.6 one recurring but to three significant figures 18.6 so 18.6 seconds question 26 right 37 centimeters cubed in millimeters cubed so imagine we have a one centimeter cube that's a cube cube that's one centimeter by one centimeter by one centimeter. How many millimeter cubes will fit in there? So that's the same as saying each centimeter is 10 millimeters. So it's 10 millimeters by 10 millimeters by 10 millimeters. So one centimeter cubed is the same as 10 along, 10 up and 10 back millimeters cubed. So 10 times 10 times 10 is a thousand millimeter cubed. So one centimeter cubed is the same as a thousand cubed millimeters. And we're writing 37 centimeters cubed in millimeters cubed. So 37 centimeter cubes will be 37,000 millimeter cubes. So it's 37,000. Question 27. Nima was driving to a hotel. He looked at his sat nav at 13.30. Distance to destination was 65 miles. He arrived at the hotel at 1448, work out the average speed of the car from 1330 to 1448, you must show all your working. So speed is equal to distance divided by time. So we know the distance is 65 miles. What is the time? How much time did it take him? So from 1330 to 1448. So it's one hour and 18 minutes. So one hour and 18 minutes, but we need to write that in hours. So one hour and 18 minutes written in hours. So it's one hour plus 18 sixtieths of a minute of an hour sorry so each hour is 60 minutes so the number of minutes is like a fraction so it's six 18 sixtieths of a whole hour so we've got one hour plus 18 sixtieths of a whole hour and we can type this in the calculator i'll also show you how to do it with a different button in a minute we've got 65 over one hour and 18 minutes, which is 50. That's 50 miles per hour. With the time button, we could have written 65 divided by one hour and 18 minutes, and we would have got the same answer of 50. So 50 miles per hour. Question 28. Write 
32,460,000 in standard form. So standard form is a number between 1 and 10, which is going to be 3.246 times 10 to a power. So how many times have you got to multiply 3.246? How many times have you got to multiply that by 10 to get 32 million? 460,000. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 times. And then we can type that in the calculator. Probably the answer. So 3.246 times 10 to the power of 7 is 3, 2, 4, 6, and 1, 2, 3, 4 zeros, which is what we wanted. Part B says write 4.96 times 10 to the power of negative 3 as an ordinary number. So when the power is negative, that means we're dividing by 10. We're going the other way. So 4.96 divided by 10 three times will give us 0 0.00496. So 1, 2, 3. And again, if we type that in the calculator, 4.96 times 10 to the power of negative 3. Asma was asked to compare the following numbers. So we've got A is 6.212 times 10 to the power of 8. B is 4.73 times 10 to the power of 9. And she says... 6.212 is bigger than 4.73, so A is bigger than B. Is asthma correct? You must give a reason for your answer. So 6.212 is times by 10 eight times, and 4.73 is times by 10 nine times. So the bigger one is going to be the one with the bigger power of 10. So that's the same as saying, if we multiply it by 10 once, 47.3 times 10 to the power of 8. So 47.3 is bigger than 6.2. So the bigger number is B. So is ESMA correct? No. You must give a reason for your answer. 47.3 times 10 to the power of 8 is bigger than 6.212 times 10 to the power of 8. We could have also written out the whole numbers. So we could have said 4, 7, 3, and then 1. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 is bigger than 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 4.73 billion is bigger than 621.2 million. Either way, the bigger one is the one with the bigger power. So we could have also said B has a higher power of 10, so that's bigger. Question 27. The diagram shows a regular pentagon and a parallelogram. Work out the size of the angle X. So for a regular shape, all the angles in a regular shape are equal. All the angles in a regular shape are equal. And the exterior angles so the exterior angle, which is the angle on a straight line with the interior angle, is 360 divided by the number of sides. So 360 divided by 5 is 72 degrees. So we've got a 72 degree angle here. And then if we wanted to know the interior angle, which we may as well work out. 
that's on a straight line with the exterior angle. So that's 108 degrees. So all of these angles are 108 degrees. Now on to the parallelogram. So a parallelogram has got well two equal angles. The 117 will also be here. But the angles, we can call them co-interior angles. So the 117 and the other one have to add up to 180. So 180 take away 117 is 63 degrees. So for this parallelogram, we've got two 117s and two 63s. So now we can work out the size of angle X. We can either do 108 take away 63, or we may as well do that, or angles in a straight line. So 180 take away 72 and 63. Either one of those. So 108 take away 63 is 45 degrees. So X must be 45. Question 30. A is in the shape of a quarter circle with radius 15. B is a circle. The area of A is nine times the area of B. Show the radius of B is 2.5 centimeters. So the area of A is nine times the area of B. The area of a circle is pi times the radius squared. So for A, the area is pi times the radius, which is 15, squared. But that would be for a whole circle. So it would be divided by 4. So the area of A is pi times 15 squared for the whole circle, then divided by 4 because it's only a quarter of a circle. So 225 over 4 pi. I'll leave it as that. I'll leave the answer as that. And we are told the area of A is 9 times the area of B. So let's say the area of B is just pi times the radius squared. And we could use this number, 2.5, and we could, it says show that, so we could substitute it in, find the area of B. So we may as well do that. So pi times 2.5 squared is 25 over 4 pi. So for B, area is pi times 2.5 squared, which is 25 over 4 pi. Show that the, the area of A is 9 times the area of B. So 225 over 4 pi is equal to nine times 25 over four pi. So that is true. What we could have also done is we could have written an equation to find R. So that is good enough. What we've done, we have shown that that is nine times that. But what we also could have done is said 225 over 4 pi is equal to 9 times pi r squared. Then we could have taken this answer, divided it by 9 pi to get r squared by itself. 
So we had 225 over 4 pi. Then we could have divided it by 9 pi, which would be 25 over 4, equals r squared. And then to get r by itself, we could have square rooted the answer and got 2.5. So we could have found out what R is and found that it is 2.5. So that would have been another way of answering that question.